being in the world. That's not what this message is going to be about specifically. But I was just in the world today. You know, I had a pretty good day. Actually, a really great day. Spiritual things were taking place, and it was just so awesome. But one thing I noticed today is those who complain and grumble and murmur, it's a habitual thing. They're doing something, and no matter what they're doing, if something goes wrong, they complain about it, they murmur, they grumble. And it's an attitude. Think about when things are going bad. You can find a reason to be thankful. You don't have to be upset or complain. If things aren't going right, if things get frustrated, like what, I cut, I cut my finger today? I damaged my car today. I'm thankful it wasn't as bad as it was. And I hear people in the world, they're just complaining about things they don't need to complain about. And it's a heart problem. That's not what any of this is about. But I just wanted to share that because I remember being like that. And it's not too difficult to stop complaining and to stop grumbling and murmuring. Really, it's cursing God. Well, I don't really know what else to say right now. I remember when, I remember the last time I got really, really frustrated. I was doing something and it was really difficult to get in there and to get it done. And I, I was so upset, I just screamed. I was like, Rah! And I was so mad. And, you know, I have no desire to do that like ever again. I don't think I will ever do that again. I look back at it, it's like, wow, I was so carnal. And now when frustrating circumstances happen, you deal with it. You don't complain. You don't curse. Now, I'll tell you this. There is never a time to curse God or to use his name in an unworthy manner. But the way you're saying things, there's a lot worse things you could be saying that for, but guess what? There is no reason to say anything, ever. What did Job say? Let the name of the Lord be praised. Though he slay me, yet I will praise him. You know, because I dropped something on the ground and I got to go down and pick it up. I'm just going to have a tantrum. <laughs> you know, if you were Job, you'd have a reason to have a tantrum. But even then, you still have no reason to have a tantrum. This world is crazy. This world is absolutely crazy. So, three pages... talking about the devil and how he was a murderer from the beginning. That's what I want to highlight here. So there is, there, there's two things I, I do want to highlight. It's, I wrote this this morning and went to work today. A really great day. It's actually very miraculous. I mean, yesterday before that was even more miraculous. It's, there's some strange things going on. And when you're seeking the Lord and your eyes are open, God is... He's doing some amazing things right now, especially for those who seek him. 
He rewards those who earnestly seek him. That's the invitation. That's Hebrews 11 and verse 6, that promise. And because Jesus Christ has died for us, he's made us access, he's given us access to God through him. And he's given us his spirit because of his atoning sacrifice for us. We can have his spirit. So why the devil was a murderer, and then, I forget what the other one is, so we'll just have to figure it out as I go. John 8, Jesus talks about how he's the light of the world, he forgives the woman who committed uh, adultery, which is actually more about those who tried to accuse her as they went away. And then he's talking to these Jews. And he has something to say about them because they weren't receiving his words or his witness. And he says to, the, to them, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. That's it right there. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Oh, that was it. It's abiding. That's the other thing. Why the devil was a murderer from the beginning and, and why we need to abide in the truth. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Wicked. He abode not in the truth. Now we're going to go to Genesis 2, verses 16 and 17 and learn the command. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Apparently, the serpent knew the command. Well, this is the other part that was really important. It's about offenses. Offenses, that's the other important part. Because if the serpent was abiding in the truth, he would not have caused anyone to to offend. He would have, have offended anyone or caused anyone to be offended. He wouldn't have done something to harm someone else. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Oh, now I'm in Genesis 3, verses 4 and 5. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So why is the devil a murderer if he only beguiled? Because he knew that it would kill him. He knew that. How wicked is that? Oh, you won't surely die. He knew that they would surely die. He wanted them to die. Even though he didn't kill them, he led them into that. And I should, should have made a note on this, but Jesus in John chapter 10, in verse 10 says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And he said that Jesus said that I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Something along the lines of that, maybe paraphrasing a little bit. But because the serpent, he knew the command of God and abode not in the truth and lied to deceive, to steal and to kill and to destroy. The devil is a liar, a thief. And a murderer. It would be like me 
telling you, oh, walk over there, right over there by that tree. And I dug a big pit for it and there's spikes in it. Oh yeah, hey, go over, go over by that tree. I, I left something over there that is beneficial for you. You really like it. It's a surprise. And then, oh, really? Okay, and and you'll fall for that. Except you obey the Lord, except you know God. And that's the difference about Christians, is we don't lead others into sin. We don't influence others to offenses. It's so important we get that. So, we are commanded to abide in the doctrine of Christ, a.k.a. abide in him, and to hold fast to the form of sound words, God's words, doing his will, keeping the commandments of God, is not grievous when you're born again. When you believe Jesus Christ, you overcome the world. Overcoming all manner of evil and wickedness, the corruption in the world. Like Peter says, the corruption that is in the world through lust. Think about our world. If we never learned evil from each other or taught evil to each other. I love this. I love thinking about this. Our world, if we never learned evil from each other or taught evil to each other, how glorious would our society be? Our children. So the devil, he abode not in the truth. We are to abide in the truth. He kept not the commands of God. We are to keep the commands of God. Here's how simple it is. You really should refresh yourself in 1 John chapter 1 and 2. But let's go to chapter 3. He that sinneth is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's 1 John 3 and verse 8. And verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Being born again, it's that simple. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Obey God. His spirit is drawing you. First Peter chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. Without hypocrisy. Not corrupted. Unfeigned Love. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Love your neighbor. Love your brother. Don't harm them. Don't influence them, influence them to harm others. Obeying the commands of God is not grievous. seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. The seed is the word of God. We are the soil, but in the honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it. And bring forth fruit with patience. That's what God gives us, that gift. Like I was mentioning to someone, the seed isn't the problem. 
but it's the soil and where the seed goes is the problem. The Word of God wants to flourish in our lives. But we can hinder it. That's what we don't want to do. Why would you want to hinder goodness? Because you love evil. Stop loving evil. Love that which is good. Believe on Jesus Christ. Seeing that you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. This is going to be important when we go into 1 John 2. The word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Jesus Christ died to give us this. Because of Jesus Christ, salvation is available. Will you believe and abide in the truth? Luke 17, verse 1. Then said unto the disciples, Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. So powerful. Just love God's word. Then our this stuff is just so holy. First Peter chapter two, verses twenty-one through twenty-five. You know, be refreshed with chapter one and the beginning of chapter two. I need to be refreshed. For even hereunto were ye called. It's going to show us what our calling is. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. Now what I'm meaning is, if somebody does you wrong, or somebody even just says something in the wrong attitude, what do you do? You just take it. You don't give it back. You don't. You try to bring peace. Suffering, righteous suffering. Not suffering because we do wrong and evil, but suffering because we take wrong and evil and we put it out. We overcome evil with good. For even hereunto were ye called because. Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. That's a one-time important Greek word right there, too. That ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Just like Nathaniel in John chapter 1. An Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. Love that. Verse 23 who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. You know, I, I think back in my past and how I reviled because I was reviled. When he suffered, he threatened not. Have you made threats before? Yes. It's nice when God frees you from wanting to harm souls, even when you're wronged. It's the 
grace of God. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. I can't talk about that too much because we'll go, we'll go way off on topic into, you know, Matthew 7 and verse 1, and then we'll go back to Matthew 6, and then Matthew 5, blessed are the merciful for they shall receive mercy. I, not yet. Verse 24, who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness it's so good the way of righteousness is so good what a gift by whose stripes ye were healed for ye were as sheep going astray but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of souls. And that's all this is. Like the intro of the world. I forget what I was even mentioning. But just dealing with people. Grumblers, that's it. They're without a shepherd. And it's hard to tell others about it in a way that they receive it. You gotta be really careful because you want them to receive it. That they return to the shepherd and bishop of souls like we have. That we're no longer going astray. Oh, I didn't number these. Oops. There's only three. So, Jesus Christ never sinned or influenced anyone to evil, nor enticed to them. And neither should we to each other. We shouldn't do that anymore. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 5, and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. And I was just sharing about the cross, why the cross is so important. What is so significant about the cross? The Holy Spirit's available now. Let him who boast, boast in the Lord. Now the Lord is that spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. John 14 is, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will come to you, the comforter. Amen. The cross. That's why the cross is so important. John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. Believing on Jesus Christ, receiving the Spirit. Because Christ has been glorified. And John chapter 12, verses 31 through 33. He's drawing all men. Because he died for us. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Now, 1 John chapter 3, verses 4 through 9. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even 
as he is righteous. The righteous Lord Jesus Christ. He that committeth sin is of the devil. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. He sinneth from the beginning. And how do we see his sin? He was deceptive. Murderer from the beginning. Verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. Seed is the word of God. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Jesus Christ didn't judge, but he is the judge. And he committeth himself to him that judgeth righteously. First John chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. He makes us born again. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. You don't have to harm somebody if they hurt you. You can commit your life unto him that judgeth righteously. This is God's ways. This is his truth. And it's perfect. It's beautiful. It's amazing. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, 1 John chapter 2, in verses 15 through 17, talking about the world. Love not the world neither the things that are in the world. You can go to Galatians chapter 5 and read that nasty list of the works of the flesh. That's loving the world. Or you can read the list under that that says the Spirit and how that's manifested. And that's the love of the Father. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. Thank you, Lord. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Remember I said abideth forever earlier? Abideth forever. First Peter in verse chapter one and verse twenty-five. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. Now 
the goodness of God is going to be forever. And he's inviting us to partake now and forever. Salvation, it's amazing.